Uh, let's go ahead and start with the first question. You know, I teach a, a film theory and criticism course this semester here at uh, CSU. And last week we were covering um, uh, feminist film theory and uh, criticism. So the first question that I asked in class before we started talking about anything was, uh, okay, can you guys think of some uh, women filmmakers that you're familiar with? And uh, after a brief silence, the first thing that came out of the class was um, James Cameron's ex-wife, <laughs> uh, not uh, Catherine Bigelow. Um, <laughs> but um, so uh, you know, I, I see that as a symptom of uh, a situation in uh, women's presence in the film industry, both behind the camera and in front of the camera. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, do you feel that women are underrepresented and misrepresented? And um, what is your response to that as a participant in uh, this um, uh, industry? And um, shall we start here? Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, statistically, it's pretty gruesome for female directors. The industry overall percentage of, women, of people directing films is 3%. 3% are women. Um, I directed a lot of episodes of Sabrina, and when I looked at pursuing a directing career, acting called me right back. <laughs> I'm very lucky as an actress to work, but I'm 52 now, and this is the age where they tell you when you get to Hollywood, whatever you do, don't get older, and I did anyway. You know, I just went get it anyway. And the problem is not that I don't work, I work all the time, but the compensation, I get paid maybe a tenth of what a man my age would make. Um, and I have about a tenth of the opportunities that a man my age has. So it gets very, very desperate. When I go out for an, uh, a television series or an audition, there's only really a half a dozen women my age that are still viable for a lot of these roles. A lot of the women that I came up with are nowhere to be found. So it is, it, it's, it's, Staying power for women is a lot harder, and you know the the roles are really you know I mean the the mom now they now they keep asking me if I could be the hot grandma, <laughs> and I'm like hot grandma okay, you know I bet it, it it's very limiting. Whereas men still have a range of roles to play. I mean I'm I have this amazing fortune of having these two films that I'm the star of, which are quite different, but that can only really be found in the independent world, uh, and there is no financial compensation in the independent world. And um, so it's tough out there, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep going and we shouldn't keep trying. And, and you know, my other film, Flyway, is directed by a woman, was written and produced by a woman. And it was very important to me to give up three weeks of my life and, and, and all of my rest to support that voice, to really, you know, to be, to be, to participate and make sure that her voice got heard. So um, we're out there fighting a good fight. Um, I agree with everything you're saying. Also, I think women need to be more supportive of one another in the industry. Um, since it is so challenging to break in, uh, break the barriers, uh, given the responsibility of working with a large budget um, production, and I find that I actually get more opportunities from men in the industry than I do from other women. And we actually need to <laughs> get over ourselves and bond together and create, you know, a sisterhood and really support one another. I think mm -hmm. it's really important for us to make bigger strides in the industry. And I think it would really uh, be helpful if we focused on that. Yeah, I remember. I'm going to add to that really <laughs> quick. I, I, was, uh, I was following, with, uh, observing on a show when I was trying to be a director and the actress in the star of the show was apparently not happy with that idea. And the guy that I was observing came to me and he said, you know what, you can't be prettier than the actress. You can't observe on the show. Oh. And I was like, really? I mean, I was just shocked that this girl, like she's starring in a show, really? That's a big problem for you? It was a big problem for her. She, she didn't want me on the set. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I always feel like I need to work harder than the person next to me, and that's not because that person next to me might be a man or a woman. It just means that I want to do the best work possible. Um, when I was in school, I wanted to go work for a female producer, and I know I wanted to um, learn. And uh, I like blockbuster movies. I know it's, it's not always um, 
uh, welcome in the independent world. But so I found the other ex-wife of um, James Cameron, Jalen Hurd, <laughs> who um, produced Terminator, Alien, uh, you know, and I. Um, I just wrote her a letter and said, listen, this is who I am, I'm a film student and I want to learn and I started as an intern there. Within two months one of the assistants um, quit and I just started doing his job for free um, while they were interviewing people and about two months into interviewing they realized, well, there's already someone doing the job. So I ended up getting my first job out of college working for Galen Hurd and um, it was amazing. I learned a lot. I learned a lot what to do. I learned a lot what not to do. I learned. Um, She's a strong female in a very much a boys club. Armageddon um, was her idea um, that she worked with her husband, Jonathan Hensley, who wrote the script based on another writer's. Um, the other writer had the idea for, you know, uh, going up and blowing up the asteroid. Her husband had the idea of making oil drillers do it. So um, they put that together and the studio attached um, Bruckheimer and Michael Bay to it. And that's a very different boys club. And to see her hold her own and fight those battles um, was amazing. Um, I would say, though, as a producer who hires all the time for my TV shows, it is very hard for me to find qualified female candidates. And so um, I try. I try my darndest. And I'm usually up till the last minute when it's like, OK, someone has to start tomorrow. So it goes back to the guy. but. You know, some of the top female producers that I know that I work with all the time are now pregnant at home having babies, um, which I, you know, God bless them and I'm so happy for them and I love seeing the pictures, but you know, again, now I can't hire them because they're, you know, having such a great time being stay at home moms. Um, and, you know, I don't know whether it's from a film school or I don't know what happens, but they're not coming across. I don't know if they're scared to reach out. I don't know what it is, but. Um, the pool of people to hire from, from my, from my perspective, in terms of, um, you know, story producers and you know people that would, you know, grow up doing what I'm doing, um, you know, women, the people, the resumes coming through my desk are three percent women. So right there, it makes it very hard in terms of who's available, you know, um, to come and do the job. So I think it's one of those things where I always try to hire You're women. In New York. No, I'm in LA. Oh, you are. Yeah, and it's very, very hard. It's um, you know, all the ones that I love and trust are either working or staying at home, and you know, to find that new young blood, um, it, it, they're mostly guys. So.